town. But let's talk about because I don't and and granted, I do see people like we have interns or apprentices that sometimes that work with us in the SOC and IR, but they don't get to perform the IR capabilities that I have. Me and a couple of my other guys, like we've worked in SOCs like for years. And we are the people that try to dispel the notion that unless it's like a MSS sock where you're just routing tickets, we're mm-hmm. trying to dispel the notion as it's like meant for entry level people. Absolutely not. No. And I want you to talk about your experience coming from a whole different industry and doing an internship in a sock. How was that like for you? Intimidating. Super imposter syndrome times 10. Like I, I was like, wow. Like, first of all, that was the hardest interview I've ever done. In my life, they picked apart my resume. I mean, what's the difference between this and this? When do you use this? Like, if it was on my resume and I couldn't speak to it, they would have known, which is why I don't recommend lying on your resume. Don't do it because you're going to get in that interview and uh, probably make a fool of yourself. So I'm happy that I was honest about it. And I'm happy that I actually went through and touched up on these assignments where I use these tools that I'm mentioning that I can bring into the interview. Um, But it was, I was the most entry level person in the entire sock. Everyone else had years in the game. They were scripting. They were doing all type of diff- stuff that I hadn't even been really exposed to past labs and maybe me doing something on try hack me. Um, but it wasn't, I was, I was nervous. I was super nervous. I, I felt like, and my management, my manager, he wasn't um, like down my neck. So a lot of stuff I, I had to figure out. Yeah. I mean, It'd be like that sometimes. Yeah. For me, my first job at McAfee didn't learn squat. I thought I didn't learn anything until I left. You learned what not to do. I learned what I didn't want to do. I learned, no, I learned what not to do at McAfee. I ain't gonna lie. I learned what not to do because the people that were in charge of us had never worked in a sock before. The guy sitting next to me, Ron, was the person, was my saving grace. Showed me a little bit of, hey, do this. Because we didn't have a, it wasn't a plan like, hey, we're going to, monitor for this day, like the sock wasn't tuned. All the thing we were working on was like submit one across the networking team so they could block the IP addresses and patch uh, the certain vulnerability accessible related to one across. And so he showed me pretty much how to help the, the, the SIM get tuned. So I had to Excel list of like all these alerts that we had firing in our SIM that technically shouldn't have been firing because all the updates in our environment will prevent these from even working against us. Mm-hmm. I had, I did all that just to get laid off. People all the time say, look out for yourself, man. Look, look out for yourself. Because I, will, I will say though, I felt supported by my team members and I, I want to, that's a good thing. Take the time to acknowledge that if you have the ability to be a good team member, if you have the ability to answer a question to someone that doesn't know the answer that you know, the answer to just do it, be nice, be kind because you never know what that person will be capable of doing or how far that can take them. Like I haven't, and I'm going to knock on wood before I leave here. I haven't had a bad coworker experience in tech yet. Everyone in tech that I've come across or worked with have been willing to help me answer questions, explain concepts, help me understand. And my favorite question is after they help me is, is this something that I should have known? And I love when they be like, Nope. Cause that makes me feel good. Yeah. But just like in real life, when it comes to working, it's the same thing. And this could be whether you're in office or remote. Energy. Yes. Your energy about yourself, how you are, how you present yourself to people is most of the time what you're going to get. Mm-hmm. If you come off as a know-it-all or this person that doesn't smile on the camera, no, now maybe you could have like some type of thing going on where you don't smile. Just don't be on camera at all. That's, I, I put my avatar on Teams on every day. I, I hate being on camera for no reason. But if you don't kind of know how to like assimilate and ingratiate ingratiate yourself with everyone, you'll probably run into that. Yep. Or sometimes you are killing it and maybe the other people don't like you. They're jealous. You have a whole bunch of politic things that are coming into. Like I didn't, like for my very first job from doing help desk, I didn't have really bad colleagues per se, but management, they weren't bad, but they were into the point where they were keeping me at a certain level. And that's the the, the biggest issue. It's yep. like, you, you run into that. And that's why I made that real the other day showing people, hey, if you're not being promoted or moving along in your career, it's going to be ultimately up to you because you got to be your best advocate and you have to go yes, to bat for yourself and say you worked on all these things and why you should deserve this. And if it don't happen for you, hit the road, Jack. That's why I left State Farm. Yeah. Yep. I, I could definitely understand that. I know for me, like I had it all planned out. 
All right, guys, so if you're watching this video, you're probably interested in cybersecurity. Well, I got a sponsor here for you. This video will be sponsored by Level Careers. Now, you see right here, it says become a cybersecurity professional, no degrees or certifications required. Make the shift to cybersecurity in as little as three months. It has a 14 day money back guarantee. It's a we self paced course, employer reimbursement and counts for continuing ed education. I have 6,000 plus students enrolled in the course currently. And here are some of the reasons why you can choose cybersecurity, high demand, job security, competitive salary, work variety, and fulfilling work. The national average salary of an information security analyst is of 113,000. Your instructor is Josh Matacor, and here is the brief overview of the course. Theory introduction, security refresher, security frameworks, security regulations and standards, security operations centers. Then you have these great labs with Azure, Logging and monitoring, Microsoft Sentinel, Secure Cloud configuration, and they help you with job hunt and job hunt execution. Use my code to try out Level Careers. You'll get 10% off by using my code, and you'll be taking the next step in propelling your career to new height. Now back to our schedule programming. So you get out of SOC, and well, first, I want let's do this because I've been realizing all my episodes are very good and, and conversational, but I do need to try to educate you guys some more. Since you say, I think you specialized in vulnerability management within the SOC. Yes. Could you briefly explain vulnerability management at a high level to everyone? So vulnerability management is essentially keeping up with and monitoring the remediation of vulnerabilities within an organization. And that's what I did. So scanning our assets, letting the owners of those assets or teams, whoever owns the asset, letting them know like, hey, this device has a vulnerability on it. You need to patch it by this date. That's how we re that's how we did it. I don't know how other companies are doing it, but that's how we did it. And then every month it was a score and a rating. You didn't do this. You did do this. This is your score. This is your rating. And, you know, people don't like SOC, SOC team members. They they don't want to patch. They want to they want you to accept that business risk on that device. They don't want to buy a new server. They don't want to patch it because it's going to break this. They don't. They have a million reasons why they don't want to remediate the vulnerabilities. So learning how to navigate dealing with team members who are resistant was something that that I felt like made me stronger. Um, so when I get like resistance from customers today, it doesn't feel as tough as it would have felt if I wouldn't have had that vulnerability management experience. So that's what it is. Remediating those vulnerabilities on your assets within the organization. And were you using a certain scanning solution? Yes, we were using Rapid7. Okay. Yep. Shout out to Rapid7. Because typically, like, we know Qualys has some free training. I don't know if Rapid7 has any free training or not. But I typically tell people VM vulnerability management is one of the areas that it's not a sexy job. Definitely not sexy. But... but I think it has a lower barrier to injury than most security related jobs. And I think it's something you could replicate over in your personal home lab or whatever you want to do and talk to it in the interview. And that's why I direct people to try to get into VM management as well, because as simple as it may seem, it has to be done and you'd be surprised. It has to be done. Like literally when, a, when something new comes out, anything, a new, a new CVE, you yeah. need to check. You need to check the next day. Yeah. Or that day, depending on how your sock is ran, you need to check to see how many assets you have to have it on there. Because if you don't, and it's already running dormant in the wild, then you're setting your organization up. So it is a really good role. Um, you can gain a lot of experience from it. I know a lot of people think of sock and they think of incident response. It's more to the sock than just incident response. 